Today I'm going to be playing this druid deck based around Sheldrass Moontree, who says the next three spells you draw are cast when drawn. So druid doesn't really have a ton of spells to really make use of this effect, but it does have survival of the fittest, which is a very good card to be able to cast for zero mana. And it turns out we can manipulate things to be pretty consistent with Lorekeeper Polkelt. Because Polkelt will put the two survivals on top of the deck. And then we draw one, it casts when drawn, which draws the other, which casts when drawn. So basically, we get to give all of our minions plus eight, plus eight for free. I thought an interesting application of the strategy would be with a few stealth minions because we can just kind of leave these sitting in play, and then suddenly they get plus eight, plus eight, and uh, they can hit the opponent pretty hard. We've also got Battleground Battlemaster to make those minions, those uh, stealth minions, hit extra hard. We've got Oracle of Elune to copy those stealth minions, either to play them bes before survival, or if they are buffed in our hand by survival, we can still copy them with Oracle of Elune, which is powerful. Oracle also has synergy with Umbral Owl, because it's quite easy to make that card cost zero mana. So yeah, we've got a lot of synergies in this deck going for us. And so far I'm winning slightly more than half my games, so seems to be going pretty well. I like Guess the Way, not so much the other two. Oh, overgrowth. Beautiful. Wow, my opponent's playing Quest Mage? Shocker. Nice, we get the extra card draw. I think it's just generally not good to play Oracle on turn 3, but it's like triple not good against Mage. Nice little stealth minion. Well, I think the play is kill this so my opponent can't target it and then play a Twilight Runner. I mean, if they wanted to target it, they probably just would have done it that turn, but I don't want my opponent to, like, accidentally fall into a good play. Um, let's play another Twilight Runner. And go ahead and set off Ice Barrier. What if I just play Sheldrass and YOLO these Twilight Runner hits? Maybe I hit Survival of the Fittest? It's not likely that I hit it, but 
At this point, I'm just kind of saving Sheldrass, hoping to pick up Polkelt. Which is, like, maybe fair. Let's just see what can happen here. I did not leave myself enough time for these animations. Well, there's Polkelt. Well, because of Polkelt, I guess I don't attack here because I can stack the survivals. Um, I do still have, like, five minions in the deck that I can draw into next turn to not waste my cast when drawn, uh, charges, I guess. I did draw a minion. So I pull Kelt here. If power is what you seek, knowledge is what I provide. And then I guess I draw with wild growth. And then I'm going to want to play Umbral Owl to kill that thing. I guess I want a hero power, because that's kind of like the only way I lose. I'm at 24. Seen a fireball already. Not super likely I lose here. You do hate to see two mana draw five. I guess it's more like four mana draw five here. Oh, and we're going face. They haven't discounted their deck, though, so there's no way I'm dead here. Um, I've seen two flurries already as well, so I think I pretty much always win. Easy win. Overgrowth into Sheldrass? Sure, why not? Well, I should definitely have time to find my win condition against this priest. Kill that and ramp. Mind if I roll mead? I need Melodon.
Could just throw it on the Battle Master to draw two more here. Strike. Seems Strike worth. Harder. Wow. I have Full Kelt and Shell Dress. And I can play them both in the same turn with Innervate Bloom. See what I can draw into here. Oracle of a Loon, huh? Probably we'll just go pull Kelt Shell Dress next turn. Pretty big buff to my board here. Uh, do I have lethal, actually? I can draw another Umbral Owl. I don't really need it, actually. Nice. I think I only need one overgrowth, and with the overgrowth, I can keep the delinquent. I think I can probably get something out of my Oracle in this matchup. Full Kelt. Probably should have just innervated that Overgrowth here. I'm not really sure why I didn't. I don't think it's worth blooming though. Well, I'll ramp now. A cruel fate awaits you in the ashes. The threat I'll just cash in on the Oracle here. Fits the mana pretty nicely.
they wanted me to draw an oracle. Makes sense, because it's not good here. Oh. Interesting. When I trade, does it shuffle my deck? So if I go, like, full kelp trade, does it give me survival of the fittest? So many contradictions. I don't know. So if I hit double survival next turn, uh, my 6 damage goes up to 22, right? Not like that'll be lethal. Probably makes sense to try to stabilize the board a bit here. So they still need to play two more. So I could go... What? Oracle, Delinquent. Wouldn't be able to play a cheap Umbral Owl with that. Let's just see if this works. I think it's probably not going to give me double survival of the fittest. One. Oh. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So where did the best in shell go? Maybe it shuffled after? Yeah, because you can't draw the thing you trade, right? So that would make sense. I'll still just go ahead and innervate this out, though. Um, Having that in hand isn't too bad, because it puts my battle master near the top. Is it a coincidence that I drew a best in shell here? Okay, I guess it is a coincidence. And that is the end of my shell dress. Um, four mana? Slightly more likely to be less. Okay. Well, nice to know that I'm drawing that next turn. Oh, I don't even have enough board space to fully abuse this Oracle of a Loon, I see. Yep, pretty murdered. <laughs> 